So team, keep it clean. We got some huge news with our Baltimore Ravens, and it is regarding the running back position, which so many of you have talked about over these past 24 hours because when it came out that the Jets were releasing Dalvin Cook from their roster, so many Ravens fans were like, oh, we should get him. We should pick him up. We should sign him. We should bring him on. And initially I was like, hmm, I, I don't know, man, should we? But – the, a lot of people have changed my tune on that because when you think about the Baltimore Ravens, even look at Melvin Gordon right now. We saw him in that last game, and a lot of people thought Melvin Gordon, oh, yeah, he's done. He's washed. It's a wrap. And we saw him. You remember when he hit that spin move? Y'all remember when he hit that spin move against the Dolphins the other day? It was nice. And I said, okay, Melvin Gordon still got it. And he's trying to show he still got it. And then in this week 18 game against the Steelers, which I expect him to be the starter, I'm sure he'll show he'll still got it. But anyway, Dalvin Cook. What would the Baltimore Ravens do with a Dalvin Cook? Would they even be interested in a Dalvin Cook? Well, let's read the report from none other than Josina Anderson. She said, we'll see tomorrow if running back Dalvin Cook clears waivers following his departure from the Jets. My understanding is one team that may have potential interest down the road on the practice squad is the Baltimore Ravens. Although... They did not have a spot available this morning. So, Josina Anderson is saying, like, hey, Ravens could possibly sign Dalvin Cook. And she should say, down the road. Now, what type of down the road is this? Is this down the road, the short road that could be for the playoffs? Or is this down the road, a short road that could be next year? I would assume that she's talking about the right here and the right now. Because of the Baltimore Ravens. After losing J.K. Dobbins, after losing Keith Mitchell, after cutting Kay and Drake, <laughs> if they could, after everything that they done been through this year, get a Dalvin Cook and he'd be on a practice squad? He'd be a practice squad player for them? Oh, I think that would be a beautiful thing because that would give you even more quality what? Depth. And you can never, ever have enough depth. And just imagine the situation for Dalvin Cook. Dalvin Cook could be thinking, man, I'm over here with these Jets. I signed a deal with the Jets. I signed a play with Aaron Rodgers and the Jets. Uh, but I ain't getting no burn. I ain't getting no carries. Man, we just keep losing and losing and losing. So to go from the Jets to go to a Super Bowl contending team, you know, Dalvin Cook, he got to be reading this report like, oh, please, Ravens, come get me, please. So we'll continue to keep our eyes and our ears all over that. And I know that y'all will as well. But somebody else. Who y'all have kept your eyes and ears on and wondering what is his status is Kyle Hamilton. And Kyle Hamilton, he joined NFL yesterday. And shout out to my guy Sam Njoku because I just could not find where this was at all. Y'all make sure y'all subscribe to his channel, Ravens Talk Podcast. We got to bring him on very, very soon. But Kyle Hamilton, he was on the NFL. And people have been wondering, like, what is Kyle Hamilton's status? Uh, what, what, what's going on with him? I think he was limited in practice the other day. What is happening with our guy Super Duper Kyle, Mr. Hammy? Well, he said that he is feeling good and he is going to be good uh, for those playoffs. Now, you may think, yeah, of course Kyle Hamilton will be good for the playoffs. Why wouldn't he be? But still, to hear that, to be reassured of that, that is big. Because we know how big Kyle Hamilton is for these Baltimore Ravens. We know how big he is for this defense and how much of a difference maker he is. But how did he get to being such a difference maker, especially so fast? They just drafted him last year. And while he is a first-round pick, still, his impact has been tremendous. And it started last year. Now, while he was on... Uh, with NFL on Twitter Live, he was asked a question. He was asked how he's grown as a safety because the person that asked him the question, the interviewer said he feels like Kyle Hamilton is the best safety, in, not, not on a team, but in the game, in the NFL. He said he feels like Kyle Hamilton is the best safety in the NFL. That's some high praise for the second-year player. I ain't complaining about it, I tell you. But anyway, uh, Kyle Hamilton, his response was by really calming down. Uh, he said that he lets the plays come to him instead of forcing them. And he also said that uh, your game changes completely when that happens. And he also said he has a much bigger grasp of the playbook and kind of just knowing what you'll see before it happens. And he said, uh, at first, some stuff may catch you by surprise the first time you see it. But after that, you get a better feel for it and you kind of see what's coming. So what Kyle Hamilton is basically saying is that he has been deep in that playbook. He has been deep in that film study. And when you see Kyle Hamilton play, 
You see how smart he is. You see how athletically gifted he is. You see how he just puts everything together and then puts it out there on that football field. You could tell that he ain't speaking nothing but the truth. That dude, Super Duper Kyle, is super duper amazing, and we, we love him. Uh, now, Kyle Hamilton, he has been at a lot of people's top safety this list and that list and whatnot, uh, but he was on another list uh, that has that talked about the lowest passer rating allowed by safeties with a minimum of, of 40 targets thrown their way. And guess who was number one atop that list going into week 18? It's super duper Kyle. It's Kyle Hamilton. Number one. Again, well, Kyle Hamilton, he's not just a safety, man. He, Kyle Hamilton is a straight up baller. That is his position. That's the position that he plays. He's a baller because he literally does everything. He's a safety. He's a corner. He's a slot corner. He's a linebacker. He's a pass rusher. He's a defensive tackle. He even lined up a defensive tackle this year. He literally does everything, man. And a player like him, their value is just is through the roof because you, you can't box him into. Oh, yeah, he's a, he's a safety. That's what he is, a safety with quotation marks. So shout out to Super Duper Kyle, man. I know y'all probably tired of hearing us talk about how good Kyle, how great Kyle Hamilton is, but it has to be mentioned because he's like that. And having him for the playoffs, it will make such a big difference. You see it. But one thing, we got to give credit to Mike McDonald, the Baltimore Ravens defensive coordinator, because for him to go up against a top offense like the Miami Dolphins, not to have Kyle Hamilton, to not have Marlon Humphrey for the majority of the game, to not have Brandon Stevens, to be losing players left and right, lost Michael Pierce, lost Daryl Worley, lost Arthur Millette for a little bit. For, for him to be losing people like that and have lost so many people before the game even started, but to hold that Dolphins team the way that he held them down, that says a lot about Mike McDonald. That says so much about the way that he adjusts. But now, the fact that we're going to get those guys back for the playoffs, Brandon Stevens will be back, Marlon Humphrey should be back, Kyle Hamilton will be back. That is such a beautiful thing, and that gives you that much more confidence in these Baltimore Ravens come playoff time. Now, speaking of Kyle Hamilton, something that was funny. Well, <laughs> I just like... I don't know if NFL they were just trying to hype it up a little bit or whatnot, but with Kyle Hamilton, they were like, oh, and this is something that I'm sure y'all seen it floating around. They're like, Kyle Hamilton is amazing. He remembers every single player that was drafted in front of him. And now we, of course, we, we know, um, I believe it's Amra St. Brown from the Lions. He is the infamous wide receiver, He'll be able to name all the receivers drafted in front of him. I don't think he can name all the players. Maybe it's all the players, whatever it is. But anyway. They're like, oh, yeah, Kyle Hamilton, he can name every single player drafted in front of him. Oh, boy, that's amazing. <laughs> like, <laughs> he was drafted at 14 overall, man. So it, it ain't that many people. In front. It's literally 13 people in front of Kyle Hamilton, man. So I just, I, I just thought that was really funny, man. So uh, <laughs> I just <laughs> I just thought that was funny, man. But um, shout out to to Kyle Hamilton. Now, um, some other news with uh, our, our Baltimore Ravens, uh, with them having issues in the secondary, as as we know, unfortunately, some guys were banged up. And then again, going into the Steelers game, I expect a guy, a lot of guys, not to really play like that. Uh, they signed safety Jeremy Lucian to the practice squad, and uh, Jeff Zrebic highlights that they had an open spot after Laquan Treadwell got moved up to the active roster for the Miami game. Uh, so Jeremy Lucian takes that spot on the practice squad, and he says they also worked out running back Tory Carter from LSU. So with them working out a running back, again, I wonder if that was, we should have took that as a sign, like, oh, maybe they will have some interest in uh, Dalvin Cook. So we'll see what happens with everything. Um, this is very exciting times uh, to be a Baltimore Ravens fan. Uh, I mean, it's always exciting times being a Ravens fan, but especially times like these, uh, times when it's, it's about to be playoff time. Uh, the Baltimore Ravens are right there. They know everything that's right in front of them. They know what they have to do. Now it's just a, a matter of doing it. It's a matter of making it happen. It's a matter of staying focused. Uh, the topic of conversation, we was on Bleacher Report earlier today talking about it, about the Baltimore Ravens potentially resting their starters or not. 
not. And a lot of people gave different reasons and different opinions on why they should or why they shouldn't. Uh, but again, I feel like, in my opinion, I feel like the risk outweighs the reward because you don't want to be watching a game where the Ravens playing their starters against the Pittsburgh Steelers, and then all of a sudden, oh, somebody got hurt in a meaningless game. Now, of course, you want to beat the Steelers. You want to eliminate them from playoff uh, contention. And now that would, I believe, open up the door for the Bills. But if, if you're playing in a game that's literally meaningless for you, whether you win, you lose, you're literally in the same exact position that you were before the game even started. I just don't think that it will be worth the risk. And I just do not want it to be a situation where the Baltimore Ravens, they're looking and they end up having regret.